deep within the heart of Darkwood, where the embers of rebellion flickered in the shadows, our brave heroes guided Prince Newt to the fortress of imprisoned humans. But in his haste to escape, he found himself ensnared within a cleverly concealed net trap. Caught in a similar trap was found a lively satyr, Klaus Kohl, who pledged his skills and loyalty to our hero's cause. The Arrowhawk returned to repay his debt, and with a solemn nod it was decided that Sparrowmind, the wise Furbolg, would be entrusted to the Arrowhawk's steady talons. He took the Furbolg high into the clouds before descending from a great height to deliver their trusty guide to his imminent destination. Guided by the half-orc leader, Rune, the heroes embarked on a tour of Darkwood Fort and its haunting spectacles of torture racks. But Liliana, ever attuned to the subtle whispers of truth, discovered that the fort had already been liberated many years ago, the humans now residing in peace behind the waterfall. She challenged the leader who told the truth. For many years ago, Sir Robin of Williams brought freedom to their camp. A newfound alliance was thus formed. In a moment of miscalculation, Klaus Karl's wand summoned forth an unexpected creature. Chaos ensued as the elephant's rampage sent all who stood in its path sprawling backward, scattering their plans like leaves in a tempest. With an explosion, the elephant erupts from the wand and you're all knocked backwards. So I'm going to need a deck save from all of you, please. 19. 11. 13. With a quick beat of his wings, only Harold, you're able to maintain your balance as the rest of you stumble to the ground while the elephant goes charging up towards the bridge. At the top of these islands, there's this large hourglass filled with water and many of these time fish that are swimming around in it. It looks like it's going to take like 30 seconds before it actually reaches there and you're not sure what might happen if it does smash into it though. So I'd like everyone to please roll initiative if you are choosing to chase it. 10. 17. 7. Does he look friendly? It doesn't seem like it's violent, just more like in a panic. Okay, I'll fly around, not directly in front of him, but like sort of to gauge his reaction and just wave and just say it's okay please make an animal handling check then a natural one <laughs> you catch up to the elephant you're flying alongside of it as you're trying to get its attention but its eyes are just locked straight forwards it's almost in fright as the ground is crumbling around it as well and debris is beginning to rain from the cavern above you it's thundering straight for the brightest thing in this place which is the hourglass at the end can i use my violin to calm it would that be animal handling or performance i'd say performance please okay Five. You're still lying on the ground and then you roll over to the side of your violin in hand as you start playing this really just scratchy sound. In your panic, you've just forgotten any like violin lessons you might have had. Kind of ready a gust of wind. Part of the bridge crumbles as the elephant charges up it and makes a deck save. Uh, 16. So it stables itself and continues running upwards. A particularly brave human roars as she takes a spear and she raises it to attack the elephant. <laughs> That's a natural 20. As the elephant instead hits her with massive tusks, it snaps her spear in half and she's thrown to a nearby wall. That's 3d8 damage. Oh gosh, that's times two as well. So she crumples against the wall. You all turn to see that she slowly rises on one knee and she's bleeding all down the front from where one of these tusks has just gored her. My plan is to tie a rope to like, if there's like a pillar or a column or something. Tie the other end to an arrow, shoot the arrow into something to try and trip him up. Like a tripwire. Sure. Could you roll an acrobatics check then, please? Ooh. Well, that's 21. <laughs> Great. So as you're flying, the other rope is trailing behind you, and you spin a loop around with this column and with a massive twang in the air. Your arrow flies to the other side of the cavern, where it lodges into a rock right in the elephant's path. Um, I'm going to heal the guy who got hurt. 13. There's a flash of bright light and her wound closes up and you hear a soft crack as her broken arm heals as well. And then she just gasps a very small thank you. Try a gust of wind on it and try and blow it like you get to the wall. Strength saving firm. That's a 17. Thunderous slams echo with each footstep of this elephant as he approaches the tripwire and its deck save is unfortunately an 18. So there's a loud snap as the rope tears under one of its massive footsteps and now the rope just dangles over the bridge beneath it and now you see that it's in a straight path directly to the hourglass. Is anyone else a little bit curious to see what happens if he does smash the hourglass? Yeah. <laughs> Rune clearly does not 
and so he lets out a sort of a war cry as he releases a firebolt towards the elephant. But with a natural two, it blasts instead to the top of the cavern, and a giant sheet of crystal that kind of reflects the daylight falls and slams down to the ground, shattering across a bunch of buildings. I am so tempted to just shoot the hourglass myself. I'm going to try and cast blindness because oh. that might send him off course. For one minute, constitution 14, he needs. Uh, it's constitution save is <laughs> exactly 14. And so the spell hits the side of its head and for a moment its eyes defocus as then it puts down its head mm. and charges towards the hourglass. I want to make a makeshift um, rain. Is that possible? You've got a rope, right? Yes. Then you can certainly try. Okay, what? Harold. Yeah? You can carry me, right? I can, apparently. Didn't you say I can carry like 250 pounds or something ridiculous like that? <laughs> yeah, the carrying rules are insane. <laughs> So I'm like super strong. How much does his trunk weigh? I could pull that. <laughs> and he get, like out of the way. <laughs> you just need a grapple check if you're gonna do that. <laughs> I feel like all my strength checks should now be done with advantage just because I'm so strong. <laughs> Never mind. I mean, I, I could because I do have an inspiration point. Your wings but, are biceps. Morris, as you stretch up your tiny arms, Harold, you spot him as you're flying up overhead. And as Morris is making some kind of reins with his rope, yeah. you swoop down to pick him up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fog cloud on him and then just sort of keep it on him in the hopes that he'll run off the edge, basically. Your hand stretches outwards and a ball of smoke hurtles towards the elephant. And then in like an arc, it goes upward into the sky and just explodes. The whole area is now filled with its dense fog and no one can see what's inside. You hear a large crack and some crumbling as part of the bridge crumbles into the water, but you don't hear any trumpeting, so you assume that the elephant is still in there. As a side note, you'll all now roll with disadvantage to do anything to hit the elephant. Okay, so I'm carrying Morris. If I'm carrying you in my, like, talons, I can still use my wings, can I? As you sing to cast spells, then yeah, you know that's fine. I would like to cast Earth Tremor. Uh, I'll do it at second level. If this goes well, it means I've done my vocal warm-ups. <laughs> it, it went wrong in the last one. I think my voice cracked on the high note, so that's, that's why he wasn't blinded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the save for that, please? Yeah, dexterity. Seven on the save. Uh, how much damage does it take, please? It's uh, ten. Yeah. You are directly above the fog now, and you can see debris churn outwards from it. And you see fog begin to swirl with the debris, and you see an opening directly above where there seems to be a very large shadow. So do you drop Morris into this opening or not? Uh, if that's what he wants, yeah. Yes, please. Do you feel Harold release you as you fall through this really <laughs> thick fog and land on your back on the elephant? So it roars as your spikes pierce it, and with a great shudder you feel it's like the sky begins clearing around you and it stumbles out of the fog and crumples on its front legs and it crashes sideways to the ground where you kind of still stuck onto its back with your spikes. So I guess I don't need to steer it anymore. It's no longer rampaging now. Okay, let's tie it up. Yeah, so just make a straight up strength check. I won't watch then. Grabbing the rope, you begin to tie it around the elephant's neck, but then as it raises its head, you're thrown off. Four points of bludgeoning damage as you hit the ground next to it. As now you're lying on your back, your eyes widening as you're looking up at this massive animal. Can we keep the fog cloud there just in case I need it? I'm going to start jogging around closer to it. So you can take the dash action if you want to, and that means you can get yeah, further up ahead, so you begin running over to, to join the elephant. And now the elephant is beginning to slowly stumble to its feet, and it's going to try and just bash its trunk on Morris. Only a 12 to hit. That doesn't hit. Debris begins raining around you as its trunk lands right next to you, and the whole island begins shaking, and the bridge that you're on begins to feel extremely unstable now. I'll shout to Morris. Morris! Hey, Harold. <laughs> no. What's happening? <laughs> I almost got killed. Oh, fun. What's happening now? Um, it's wriggling about menacingly. Do you trust me to shoot? <laughs> I mean, you, you put us into this mess so you'll get us out, so yeah. <laughs> How did I put you into this mess? You made the earth wobble. I aim away from where Morris's voice was coming from. <laughs> you'll have to roll with disadvantage. So the first one is a 17. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Eight. The eight, unfortunately, will not hit. Okay. An arrow flies past Morris's head through the dust and there's a clattering sound as it strikes instead the stone island. Can I make it all the way? You can take the dash action to reach it, but you won't be able to take any actions after that. Uh, I'll get like 
10 feet away from it. You reach the swirling dust that obscures everything from sight as the ground under your feet becomes really broken and unsteady. Part of the stone building next to you crumbles and through the dust you see the shadow of the elephant that is going to try and bite Morris now. But that is a natural one. And so as it tries to bite you, its knee buckles again and this time its heavy face just crashes to the ground next to you. Okay, I try to calm it with my veterinary skills. Sure, you can make an animal handling check. That's 17 plus 7. Um, I go up to its face. You know how you see the horse? Mm -hmm. And I like whisper an ancient elven language to it. You're (laughs) still winded from your fall as you crawl slowly over to its head. And you see its tiny eyes that were quite angry before uh, now look really scared. Its breathing is rapid too as it attempts to pull away from you. But then you lightly extend your hand towards its head and your voice is coming out more in like a whispered song than it is speaking. And then it's breathing, you notice, begins to steady and its muscles relax as it gradually slumps to one side and appears to fall asleep. The fog I'll is a through to Morris again. How you doing, mate? <laughs> oh, I'm good. I've solved the issue. Oh, okay. How? Um, I forgot that I was a vet and I put it to sleep. <laughs> Not like that. Just, just proper sleep. Like Slumber. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Is there any way we can clear this fog? I mean, I'm sure Liliana could, but um, I'll I'll fly down. I can use shape water. Can you not like condense it down into like an ice cube or something? Yeah, yeah, I do that. So your staff whirls through the fog and thick air around you, and then finally you raise your staff to the sky, and it all pulls together in an instant, and an ice cube hovers in the air directly in front of you. I catch the ice cube and I hand it to Liliana. Put my daggers back. I'm about to stab it with them. How close is it to the edge? I've just had a cool idea for whenever Liliana wants to redeploy that fog. If she just smashes the ice cube on the floor, it could. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I just visualised it being really cool, like scattered <laughs> and then fog comes out. Sorry, carry on. Okay, well, I'm going to use my immense strength. I'm going to try lifting the back leg. But if I was strong enough, I could flip it over and it'd roll off the edge. <laughs> Please make a oh, strength God. check. 18. It's exactly what you needed. And so with all the strength you can find, you grasp the elephant and you heave upwards and sounds of cracking and crumbling like fills the air around you. As with one final push, rocks begin to crumble into the water and then the elephant falls off the edge. Shortly after there is a large splash into the water as the current takes it down into the depths of the cavern below. I'm going to tear a little strip off the bottom of my wedding dress that I'm still wearing because I'm feeling particularly accomplished and I'm going to tie it around my head like a little um, <laughs> and look a bit more tough. Amidst all of this chaos, Rune walks up to you, kind of has his hands on his hips and he says, I'm seizing this from your satyr friend. And he shows you the wand of wonder. I snatch it off, Rune. Uh, you roll a slight hand. That's a 21 though. I rolled a 20, and so you snatch it off him, and he's like, well, is, that is evident, I, I must keep it safe. But, but I can keep it safer, and I just wander off with it. <laughs> I've always wanted one of these. <laughs> your pocket. Can, can you not harness this power to repair the damage? I can try. I'll fly up. <laughs> oh, God. Should quick. Please, can you roll a D100 then? One. <laughs> so you wave this wand around you and there is a soft ticking in the air as you notice that some of the falling debris now seems to fall in slow motion as it crumbles into the water below. Uh, you cast slow. No, apparently I can't help. Liliana, why did you do that? 
that she was attacking us. It was asleep. It was it was a panic and it appeared out of nowhere. Wouldn't you do that? I can I mean, kill whatever I want. But it was a defenseless creature. Killing animals is quite fun. I'm, I'm an animal. animal. <laughs> <laughs> How well did you return to Rune? You promised us a circus performance, and I mean, after this, people could use some proper entertainment. Um, I mean, I'm a bard, so I could I could sing a song if if you want some entertainment still. It has been many months since we had visitors. A song would be welcome. Oh, oh, we could have a karaoke night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is karaoke? Oh wow! Let me tell you. Okay. We will play some music. You know, I'll play the music to your favorite songs on whatever instrument I can find. And you all sing. You take it in turns to sing and we drink and we have fun. It will be the best night of your lives. I promise you. You can roll a persuasion check. My modifier is plus nine for persuasion. So, uh, 28. (laughs) Our favorite songs and we drink. That sounds like a fun evening. (laughs) Tell you what, you get this karaoke thing sorted and I'll make the announcement. Um, you know, when you have a karaoke night and it has those pictures in the background? <laughs> yeah. I can create something to that effect with Druidcraft. I can write down lyrics with my pen. He is looking pretty excited now. And he's like, oh, we still have casks of ale we've been saving for a celebration. And I'm sure Juan Martin has just enough time to prepare a feast. Yeah, oh, I can also be telling some fortunes. I was a fortune teller, and once per day I can give them vague things. You really are talented folk. (gasps) The finest. (gasps) And suddenly there's a sound of a bell being rung repeatedly, and Rune kind of jumps in fright almost as he looks towards the bell. Not in many years. As then he rushes towards the entrance to the caverns. Should we go and investigate? I think we should probably follow. Yeah. You hurry after Rune. And the entrance leads to a vast tunnel that's lit by torches of blue fire. And as you reach the end of this tunnel, you see another of these massive hourglasses filled with water. And many of the mysterious ghostly fish swimming around inside of it. Uh, You're surrounded by a deep river that flows underground. And it all flows downwards towards the bottomless pit at the end. There are several silver boats on the river, humans fighting against the current that are pulling them downstream, as then many others are manning fishing rods that have a glowing golden string. And there's a very excited buzz all around you as you hear mutters of people talking about the biggest fish sighting in years. Can we help fish? Sure can. <laughs> How big are they? The fish seem quite small inside the hourglass, about the size of your, you know, average trout. I have mage hand. I would like to grab one of the smaller ones. So your mage hand descends into the water and it almost seems to vanish as it does descend. And then a few moments later you bring it back up. There is no fish in it, but it does seem to be more transparent than it was just before. I say to the fish, come here. I forgot you're a fish person. How can you communicate with beasts that breathe water? (laughs) Sure. Uh, You can roll a persuasion check to see how it reacts to you. Good. 16. So there is silence all around you and then there's a ripple in the water in front of you and you see a kind of ghostly glow beneath the surface and bubbles begin rising as well. And then as a golden string descends into the water by one of these humans trying to catch it, it lights up the fish and in a panic, the fish descends downwards causing waves all around you and you're splashed with very black water. I grab one. If you do that again, I can use shape water and then lift the fish for you to catch. I dive in. You hear an old woman behind you just shouting no. As you dive into the water, and I'm going to need you to roll a constitution save as your guilds begin to adapt to this very foreign water. 11. Uh, sure, please can you roll a d4? 4. You descend quite rapidly and then begin to gain control under the water, but how you feel is almost comparable to like a salt water fish being put into fresh water as your body's trying to react to this very foreign water and it's quite painful and feels like you're suffocating. You see golden fishing line begin falling around you as people are rushing to try and rescue you or catch the fish, you're not quite sure. But all this does really is terrify the huge fish as then it was looking at you and then it turns away and you're splashed with more bubbles. As you begin to take unsteady breaths, what are you trying to communicate to the fish, please? I'm communicating with the fish the idea that I have some food for it. As these bubbles fly up around you, it seems to be they're almost in slow motion as then you see its huge tail swishes through the water and its bulging orange eyes fix on you as it slowly now begins gliding towards you, searching for the food. Please can have another constitution save as you stay down here. 
as a natural 20. I've got a fishing rod. With everyone trying to um, save Liliana, I'm going after the big fish with mine. I'm going to aid Harold with shape water. All of the humans here have abandoned their attempts to catch the fish. Knowing how fatal this water can be, the vaults refocus their efforts on trying to save Liliana. You take <laughs> advantage of this distraction and see a huge ripple in the water as the fish begins to ascend. Meanwhile, Liliana, as you're surrounded by the rush of the water around you, amidst the current you see the passing of time flowing around you and you begin to glimpse flashes of your past life and a few of these moments are really significant and overwhelming almost. It feels like you're right there in the moment. It first appears to be, you know, key memories. So your wedding day and the moment you received an inheritance. But faster and faster the water rushes around you and the memories flick through your childhood and teenage years. Which single memory are you particularly drawn to as all this passes around you? Watching my sisters get given nice new dresses and I get given a single fisherman's boot. <laughs> <laughs> Off the ship. You feel that same childish pang of jealousy that you felt in that moment. So what would you like to do? I can change history. You feel you have full control over your actions right now? I am going to throw the boot at one of my sisters and punch the other one in the forehead. <laughs> Please make <laughs> two unarmed strikes against them. This is great. <laughs> I have an 18 to hit with one. Uh, this is 7 to hit. The fisherman's boot flies through the water with great force and strikes your sister's head and you see red blood begin to streak upwards through the water and as you swing for another punch you find yourself right back in the scene you were before with the giant fish swimming in front of you although now it seems to be ascending upwards away from you. I've tried to swim up. Because you make an athletics check. That is a natural time So the fish is rising in the sphere of water that Morris you're controlling as it has a golden strand of fishing line that Harold you're holding on the other end of and with a surge of strength Liliana you burst out of the water directly in front of, uh, of your two companions as then human hands reach down to try and pull you out of the water and help you oh, as this giant fish hovers in the air in front of all of you. I start to reel the fish in. With a massive splash, the fish flops out of the water that's suspended <laughs> in the air. Its golden, ghostly scales reflect the blue light of the torches all around the river as well. And then they send dancing ripples of light around the cavern around the pool. There's a blonde hair guy who just gives a kind of whoop and the people around begin cheering. Rune, in total awe, just mutters to Harold, You've got our entire quota for the next year. What? I thought we were giving this to the cook. We don't cook these fish. Oh, I thought that's what you do here. If we eat a little bit, a scale or two, toasted scales, maybe, would we live longer? I don't deem it wise. We don't die through natural causes like everyone else in the outer realms do. It takes intent or magic to kill a citizen of Taurus. However, if you wish to, by all means. I nod to Harold. <laughs> <laughs> I just grab a fin and pack it. <laughs> I would He's... like to try and shove her before she can. I'd like to try and stop. No, but also flying. Just throw a rock. What would it be? Just do d20 plus your dexterity. That is a five, uh, seven overall. That does not hit. <laughs> There's a splash of water as a rock flies over Harold's head and then he slices upwards and the whole cavern is almost silent. And then almost in slow motion, the scale flies into the air and Harold, you catch it. I take a nibble. <laughs> Please, can you make a constitution saving throw? Well, that was a four. So you're going to take 10 points of psychic damage as you feel time stretch. And for the next 24 hours, your movements are halved, but you're going to have advantage on any ability checks that require dexterity. So Rune then extends his hand outwards and a huge glass jar forms around the fish and water begins filling it. He then holds the jar to the sky and there's a burst of radiant light as we cut to about three hours later. In a very similar flash of light, Harold, you squint as your eyes adjust to the spotlight that's just been put on you. You're all in the timeless tavern. A huge clock with many hands ticks behind you as you see the whole town has essentially turned up to this place. The feast has been prepared and the whole town hushes to a silence as you prepare karaoke for them. Harold, are you gonna demonstrate first? 
Yeah, I will. So, uh, which song would you like to perform? I have the tiger. <laughs> so, like, I've done the lyrics on a little flip chart. I'll use Mage Hand to turn it over to, for the next set of lyrics. And so I'll point to show them, like, you know, you look, you look at that for the lyrics. I'll play my lute. Yeah, like a bard version of I have the tiger. Um, I'll use Druidcraft to point to, like, what lyric you should sing at what point. <laughs> oh, okay, so the words light up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. So with the opening riff of I have the tiger on your lute, please can you make a performance check. 20. Isn't one of the gods a tiger? Yeah. Can I get the gold <laughs> statue out? <laughs> it's like stage dressing. You begin singing this almost worship song to the god of strength, and the crowd love it, particularly the now familiar, like, young, blonde haired guy who grabs his acoustic guitar and begins playing along from the corner of the room. You notice he picks up the riff pretty easily and people are cheering him as much as they're cheering you now. Your song ends with an incredible pan flute solo, as then the crowd applauds and a cue begins to form. And as one person begins to sing really badly, the guy with the guitar rushes over to you, Harold, and he's like, <laughs> Little Al dude, that was so awesome, man. I'm, I'm Billy, uh, Billy Neptune, and I'm like totally into this whole music thing too, and you're just like, next level, dude. Oh, thank you. Hi, Billy. I'm Harold. George, what should we form up with? Oh, I'm so excited. We should form a band. Oh, I'm already in a band. Uh, it would be a oh. pretty bogus move to betray them. What's your band called? Omens of Sound, dude. Oh, Omens of Sound featuring Harold. Like, Harold and the Neptunes. <laughs> and, and hey, I can, I can teach you how to play guitar <laughs> while you're here if you'd like. Yes, please. Now that we're friends, I think I'm going to offer you a free fortune telling i usually charge for that stuff now that we're friends i'll do that for free you will like, never go home <laughs> <laughs> he's next up in the queue and he's like uh maybe after my song so he gets up on the stage and begins performing like a song called my beating heart with a performance of 17. <laughs> he completely smashes it out of the park and it's got a really like catchy chorus that everyone starts singing along to as the lyrics appear. When it finishes, he kind of pulls his guitar and hops off the stage again. Uh, how was that? That was incredible. You knocked it out of the park. <laughs> I don't know what a park is, but you knocked it out of it. <laughs> visions, you see, I'm getting, I'm getting visions. Do you want that fortune telling now? Sure, little hell, dude. Yes, okay, all right, all right, give me your hands. He places his hands on your wings. Okay, I'll turn him over. I cast the bones up. Uh, can you roll your inside plus proficiency? Oh, that was a six, so nine. It has been a long time since you've tried reading fortunes and you are in another world. So <laughs> you are quite rusty, but you do get a sense of general hope for his future. Like, despite feeling lost, his future is quite hopeful. I just like inspect them and just wave my hands over them and say, like, like close my eyes, they're going to roll back a bit, but it's kind of smelling something nice. I'm, like, I'm, getting, I'm getting hope. For your future there's uh, things are hazy but but i i see i see a strong sense of hope he's silent for a minute and he's like dude you're good hope huh it's coming my friend so during this is the karaoke still happening yeah i'm helping with the lyrics so as you're working your druid craft on these lyrics you lock eyes with someone in the queue for the karaoke she's quite a frail looking woman but she looks quite elven and her eyes are really sharp almost animalized rather than human though. She, she continues to stare at you as the cue moves along and then when she's asked which song she'd like to perform she says can you write in other languages? I say sure. A song of our people? Uh yep. Do you speak the druidic language? Uh sure I can translate for Harold. Her song yep. feels quite ancient and tribal and her words are speaking of healing and transformation. It's really only a couple of like slow verses as you're going through, but as she sings to the town, everyone is transfixed and only a few sing along uh, to the Druidic language. But do any of you join in? Absolutely. What kind of instrument does she want? Whatever you want to play. <laughs> Just I'll, go, I'll go pan pipes. I think it, it calls for some pan pipes. So you begin playing on these pan pipes and as she begins singing this song and you're playing, you're all healed by 12 points of healing as the song washes over you and you're filled with the feeling of running through the mountains in Taurus. Then the last of the pan flute echoes into silence, but there's no applause as this woman just nods her head, picks up a walking staff and heads towards the door. 
But as she does, Marity notices that the dying flowers on the tables around her, they begin to restore to life as she passes each of these vases. Oh, we've all been drinking quite heavily as well. I did, I did <laughs> promote that. It seems Rune has just been giving you free drinks throughout the evening and takes this opportunity as you're definitely beyond tipsy at this point to come and chat with you. And he slides into the table you sat at. Now may not be the best time to talk, but I saw how you handled yourselves with the elephant and, and the fish. And time to time we need services from the outside world as we just cannot get ourselves. How does it sound if we form a mutually beneficial alliance here? An exchange of services. Sounds good to me. What kind of services? Uh, the dwarves up in North River Fort operate a Mithril Nine. Uh, we need someone to go and purchase some for us. Okay. What are you trying to build here? This you must swear to keep from that council who sent you. Oh, no, we don't really like councils. There are gates in this world, operated by high ups. Gates that can take you where you need to go, and gates that take you out of this realm. I have someone who's able to open an illegal gate, which means that we can not only send humans back out, but we can also send you through. But to make one of these gates, we require a significant amount of mithril and someone to bring it to us. Yeah, we can do that. How much is it going to cost? 1,500 gold pieces, of which we have the gold for you to pay the dwarves. We'll get the mithril for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can I go and check out the druid woman fell into and see if I can find anything druidic. So as Room begins writing up a contract, Morris, you head out the door and straight away you spot a path of leaves that are leading up the secret path out of the waterfall. A walk in? There's just the roar of the waterfall next to you as you head through this path that winds upwards. As it exits out into the moonlight, is a large black wolf. Its ears prick up as you approach, and then with a swirl of leaves, it transforms into this frail druid woman. And she says softly, I thought you were like me. Uh, like you? Show me your true form. Okay, out of fright, I accidentally turn into tiger. Please can you roll a nature check? Oh, um, <laughs> two plus three, so five. She kind of looks you up and down and then says, fight me. And then she leaps towards you, and as she does so, she transforms back into this powerful looking wolf. Please roll initiative. 13. Okay, so you react just in time and you brace yourself for her attack. I'm gonna bite. 19. 5 damage. She dives onto you, and then you dodge out of the way, biting her front leg as she bounds over, and she spins around and instead bites your ear with a 19 to hit. Yeah, that hits. That is seven points of piercing damage as she tears into your tiger ear and you feel hot blood running down the side of your face. Do you retaliate? Right. Twelve. As you pounce again, her back legs kick you and then taking advantage of your stumbling, she leaps for another bite with 22 to hit. Yep. <laughs> 14 points of piercing damage as she bites into you and then she just snarls in your face. She pushes you away with both paws and then she transforms back into human form. And then she spits at you, like, you're weak. Oh, okay, so I turn back into human form and don't attack. She continues to look really disappointed in you and says, Your true form is hardly a tiger. What form of oh. second-rate magic turned you into this? It's a long story. Went on a walk one day and I found this ancient temple at midnight. Walked into a ritual and I saw some things I shouldn't have. Well, one thing led to another and now I'm here. She looks almost angry here, and she's like, so the tree never blessed you? No. What's that? Well, everyone in this realm has their true form, but only the tree touched can access that form. I just picked up things that people were talking about. No one really noticed me in the circle. I just read some books. As you're talking, she begins scooping up some earth and scatters it into a wooden bowl, mixing it with some liquid that she pours from a tiny bottle that's around her neck until the whole thing becomes like a deep golden liquid. She pours it into a vial and holds it up and says, this is merely a temporary measure, but it may help harness your powers as she hands it over to you. I owe you lots. What's your name? My true name is unspoken, but you may call me Lyra. Lyra, nice to meet you. And I drink all of the 
golden liquid. As you drink this liquid, you feel your arms become really hot, and then you feel your limbs are stretching as the trees around you become almost an ancient kind of familiar to you. As you pick up distant scents on the wind and the sound of small beasts rustling in the plants around you, you transform into a magnificent elk and you level up to level six. Thank you. I have helped you as far as I can, but there is another who may assist you further. An ancient druid lives in the Rootling Woods, deep in the Rootling Woods, mind. Find him and he will guide you further in this magic. How, how will I know where he is? Transform it into your true form and the world will guide you. Have you ever done this before? It is he who gave me the tree sap you have just drunk. Okay, I'll trust my true form then. Thank you. Back now in the beer garden outside the Timeless Tavern, Harold, you sit with Billy Neptune as he teaches you chords, which at first you struggle playing with your wings, obviously, but you gradually adapt until you're playing the song that he played at the karaoke. And as you finish, he's just like, dude, you picked that up way faster than Jimmy Neptune. Oh, are you brothers? <laughs> no, nah, just great coincidence. Oh, maybe our band should be called Harold and the Neptunes. <laughs> like you're thinking, I'll do it. <laughs> You've been playing long? As long as I can remember, really. I came out of my egg, you know, playing the banjo, and ever since then, stringed instruments are my, my thing. Wind, mm. too. Quite like the wind. I've got my pan pipes, I've got my bagpipes. Just friggin' taking <laughs> out all my instruments out of my put just pockets and pouches. I've got a got a ukulele. Do you have like a signature <laughs> instrument? I do quite like the bagpipes. They are my favourite. Dude, bagpipes? I'd love to hear those. Absolutely, yeah. I, sh- I show him my favourite tunes. As you play your absolute favourite song, you notice that he seems to brighten up and he seems to regain energy. And as you realise that you've just played him a song of rest, and he's like, did your music have magic as well? Oh, well, yeah, I am a little bit magic. But, you know, when I am when I just get lost in the music, the magic just flows. And, yeah. and does something like tie you to your magic like a memory or a melody there's this lullaby from my childhood that i quite like i get out the pan pipes and <laughs> play like my favorite little tune that i used to play to get kingsley to sleep when he had nightmares sounds like that little raccoon was special mm. i tell him all about kingsley and when i miss him i play that lullaby to myself <laughs> we adopted him in the end really yeah he's legally my son now wow you must miss him yeah Rune was telling us that time is, like, different here. Like, we could spend days here and no time passes back home. Yeah, I gathered. So maybe Kingsley won't even know you've been missing. Hopefully. How long have you been here? Oh, bro, it's hard to tell. I I never learned to read calendars. Uh, Maybe ten years? Uh, But that could be ten minutes back home. Uh, Or it could be hundreds of years. Uh, All I know is that... Everyone I love could be dead. I guess that's why I write the music I do, bro. How many songs do you have? <laughs> Hundreds, dude. Do you have any cheerful songs? Omens of Sound don't make happy music, but I have my own stuff. Oh, yeah, I'd love to hear them sometime. Well, dude, I can play one now if you'd like. Oh, yes, please. He starts a cheerful acoustic melody about his younger life <laughs> and his teenage sweetheart, but it's as if he forgets the lyrics halfway through and it just kind of ends abruptly and he sighs. I'm uh, no good at remembering the words. I uh, mm. had like a whole bunch of songs, but got stolen weeks ago. You've forgotten them. It's like I don't remember things very well, but I'll never forget the face of the dwarf who stole it from me. Oh. Or the words on his caravan. <laughs> He's mm. from this South Haven Mining Company. If you ever run into them on your oh. adventures out there. If we pass any dwarves on our travels, I'll investigate for you. I take out my pen. If you describe him, I can sketch him. He has like a big bulbous nose, uh, angry eyebrows, and like a, a real shifty look about him. Huh? Little owl dude, you're good. That's him, all right. <laughs> if you bring me back my songbook, I can, uh, well... Sing me a song? <laughs> dude, in, in return, I can teach you some magic I learned when I got here. He then takes out his guitar and makes a few tentative strums before the melody, I guess, comes back to him. And he picks out a song that almost confuses you. And you begin to feel a sense of disorientation before your senses suddenly sharpen. And you feel very, very aware of yourself. This is a counter charm. I I can write down the music if you give me your pen. Yeah. 
So he begins writing down the sheet music to the song and you study it over his shoulder and you begin to understand how the song works and the magic is interwoven with it. And as you begin to play the song together, a magical wind flies around mm -hmm. you and you see like music notes flying in this wind as well. And your mind begins to sharpen as you can comprehend the counter charm. And as this happens, you level up to level six. Meanwhile, Liliana, quite an old looking wizard, has invited you to the tallest building in this town and taking you to the highest room in this place. You find yourself in a circle sparring room filled with straw dummies of people. He towers over you at first and you notice up close he has green tattoos across his face and arms that kind of glow very softly. And then he kneels to meet your eye. Remind me of your strength. What? Swimming and... I guess my innate ability to control air and water. I have a few spells. There's a dragon queen right in the family. So, who are you? I am Liliana Lillian Mulworth of the Liliana Mulworth. Your blood magic. This is controlled, right? Basic things, but I've avoided using it. Why? My mother told me it's not ladylike. He lets out quite a roaring laughter for the first time, and his face softens. And then he goes to pull one of the straw dummies from the center, and he says, Strike it. I'll blast it with air. Um, please make your attack against it. That is a 17. You pick out a legume as the powerful wind fills the room. But while the dummy flails backwards and straw goes flying everywhere, it's not knocked over. And then as the spell ends, the trainer goes, Hmm, not very powerful. Strike again. I do the same one. Please make another arcana check. 17. <laughs> the room shakes now as a second gust of wind blasts outwards, but the figure still stands. He appears to cast a spell as the wind fades. What is your focus when you use this magic? The wind? You must have a reason to use magic. What is your purpose? To survive, to get home. Strike again. 30. He immediately ends the spell before he even hits the dummy and says, What are you fighting for? Why do you want to go home? Power? Then feel that power inside of you. Take control of that power and strike. Uh, eight. A very weak wind fills the room and then he just lets that continue. And then he comes up to you and he says, You mentioned draconic heritage. Yeah. Are you aware all dragon families originate here in Taurus? I was not. Every ancient dragon in the outer realms came from this land. Harness this ancient power within you and strike again. Uh, natural one. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> really deep within to try and will this power from you, but nothing happens and it begins walking around you. Perhaps it is the spell you are using. Uh, try another spell. 17. With all the force you can muster now, a streak of light you've never seen before bursts out and it slashes across the training dummy, which then shudders as it begins to enlarge to twice its size. Yes, he says, and you can see he's now smiling. Yes, this is the power I wanted to see from you. Focus not on your magic. Focus always on the thing you're fighting for instead. I'll try one more and shout friendship. Natural 20. As you cry this word, a wave of water surges across the room and bursts out in an explosion and it immediately all turns to ice. The dummy is nothing more now but a piece of straw caught up in an explosion that looks like a strange ice sculpture. The person training you grins. Now that is power worthy of your bloodline. As you now level up to level 6. You all return to the town square where a wagon has been prepared for you that's loaded up with all the equipment needed for a long journey. Rune steps up to you and says, You have my gratitude for accepting this task. Mind you stay clear of the enchanted forest on your journey northwards. Most folk have taken to calling it the Rootling Woods now, now that it is so infested with those creatures. And know you will always have an alliance here with Darkwood Town and a place to stay or... Lie low from the Empire, should you need it. Thank you. I appreciate everything you've done for us, Rune. What of Prince Newt? We'll keep him here, because um, he can be around as humans. Teach him how to lead, and tell him that we're coming up with a solution to get him home. I'll be sure to inform him of your departure. 
Rune then leads you all out of this hidden town and takes the wagon up the lift until you're out of the massive gates of this fortress. Then, with the gentle roll of the wagon beneath you, you begin your long journey northwards as the trees grow darker and darker around you. And that's where we're going to end the session for this evening. <laughs>